Benjamin Franklin is known for a lot of things. He was a printer, ran a newspaper, was a postmaster, and of course, we can all picture him flying a kite. He was a statesman and one of the founding fathers of our country. But what you probably didn't know was that Franklin was responsible for starting the nation's first and oldest federal law enforcement agency, the United States Postal Inspection Service. Let's take a look at the history of this great organization. Way back in 1737, when Franklin was the postmaster at Philadelphia, he was assigned the additional duties of regulating the several post offices and bringing the officers to account. This was the forerunner of the duties of a postal inspector. When Franklin became the first postmaster general under the Continental Congress, he couldn't take care of his duty anymore. So he appointed William Goddard as the first surveyor of the new American Postal Service. August 7th, 1775, the earliest reported date Goddard served as surveyor is established as the birth date of the Postal Inspection Service. Surveyors became the first postal inspectors and also began investigating thefts of mail or postal funds, often by a writer, innkeeper, or other person entrusted with the mail. In 1792, postal crimes were considered serious offenses and Congress imposed the death penalty for stealing mail. In 1801, the title of surveyor was changed to special agent. There were only about three special agents at this time, and one of them was Noah Webster. You may have heard of him. He compiled a dictionary. During the War of 1812, special agents observed and reported on movements of the British fleet on the Potomac River. In 1835, Preston S. Lawborough was placed in charge of a new investigative branch of the Post Office Department, the Office of Instructions and Mail Depredations. He is considered to be the first Chief Postal Inspector. In the 1840s, special agents were sent to Texas, Oregon, and California to oversee the establishment of new mail services. 1853. As the country expanded westward, the number of special agents grew to 18. Assigned to specific territories, they reported on the conditions of steamboats, horses, stagecoaches, railroads, and other conveyances used to transport the mail. During the Civil War, David B. Parker supervised the transportation and delivery of mail to Union troops. Parker, who became a special agent and later chief inspector, re-established mail service as Southern states returned to the Union. In 1861, Alan Pinkerton, another post office special agent, became Lincoln's head of security and was instrumental in founding the U.S. Secret Service. After the Civil War, Congress enacted two major statutes that postal inspectors use to this day. First was the mail fraud statute in 1872, which was used to combat a rash of swindles by mail that erupted after the Civil War. Then in 1873, the postal obscenity statute came into existence based on the urging of Special Agent Anthony Comstock. By 1873, there were 63 special agents who were assigned to six divisions, each headed up by a special agent in charge. 1880 marked another title change. Special agents became known as post office inspectors after a law was passed by Congress. The change was to differentiate the federal postal agents from the multitude of other special agents employed by railway and stagecoach companies. Inspectors investigated postal crimes across the vast open spaces of the West. In 1881, the notorious Billy the Kid was interviewed by inspectors in connection with a mail robbery in Santa Fe, New Mexico. 1897, 100 inspectors. The gold rush of the late 1800s brought thousands of fortune seekers to the Alaska Territory. 1898, Post Office Inspector John Clum was appointed as Special Commissioner and established post offices throughout the Alaska Territory. Eight years earlier, as a newspaper man in Tombstone, Arizona, and a friend of Wyatt Earp, 
Klum witnessed the gunfight at the OK Corral and was the first to report on it. In 1900, post office inspectors seemed to be everywhere. Inspectors investigated postal fraud in Cuba, which was under U.S. military jurisdiction, and they traveled to Puerto Rico and Hawaii to supervise the start of mail service in these new U.S. territories. Tragedy struck the agency in 1908. Post Office Inspector Charles Fitzgerald was gunned down in Clinton, Mississippi, becoming the first inspector killed in the line of duty. Since then, 13 additional inspection service personnel have lost their lives in the line of duty. In 1909, inspectors investigated the Black Hand, a secret society of criminals who extorted money from Italian immigrants by sending them threatening letters. Inspector Frank Oldfield arrested 14 members who were all convicted. 1913, 400 inspectors. 1916, the last known robbery of a horse-drawn mail wagon happened in Nevada and was investigated and solved by post office inspectors. The bandits who stole $3,000 from the mail and murdered the driver were arrested within five days. The reputation of the inspectors was grown. In 1919, Inspector Elmer Irie was selected as the chief of the newly created Internal Revenue Service Intelligence Unit. He and five other former inspectors led the investigation of Chicago mobster Al Capone. The Roaring Twenties were indeed roaring for the post office inspectors. Post office inspectors became the first federal law enforcement officers to carry the Thompson submachine gun, the Tommy gun, to combat the rash of mail train robberies. 1920, Charles Ponzi, the father of the illegal pyramid scheme that carried his name, was investigated by inspectors who helped convict him. Ponzi built millions of dollars from the public in a scheme that falsely promised a 50% return on investments. 1921, Gerald Chapman, who became the first public enemy number one, and Dutch Anderson robbed a U.S. mail truck of over $2 million in New York City, making it the largest robbery of the time. Inspectors captured the two robbers. Convicted, they each received 25-year sentences, but escaped from a federal prison in Atlanta in 1923. Chapman was eventually hanged, and Anderson was killed in a shootout. During the 20s, two of the most notorious mail train robberies occurred. The botched robbery in the Siskiyou Mountains of Oregon by the Dutremont brothers in 1923 and a well-planned heist at Roundout, Illinois in 1924. Inspectors caught up with the Dutremont brothers after a three and a half year worldwide manhunt. All three were convicted and sentenced to life in prison. Inspectors doggedly tracked down the Newton boys from the Roundout robbery. All were convicted. There was no let up in activity for post office inspectors during the 30s. In 1936, public enemy number one, Alvin Karpis, was arrested by inspectors and local police for the spectacular machine gun holdup of a mail train in Garrettsville, Ohio. 1937, the airship Hindenburg, the largest dirigible ever built, burst into flames upon touching its mooring mass in Lakehurst, New Jersey. Post office inspectors responded and recovered mail that was on board. Between 1937 and 1941, Inspectors planned the movement and protection of over $15 billion of gold from New York to Fort Knox. More than 500 railroad cars carried the gold by registered mail. 1939, with more than 600 post office inspectors on the rolls, a separate bureau of the chief inspector was established. The 40s brought more change and post office inspectors were right in the thick of it. 1940. The first of five forensic laboratories was established in Washington, D.C. During World War II, 247 inspectors serving in the military services organized a mail system for the troops, the Army Post Offices, called APOs, and the Fleet Post Offices, or FPOs. 
The system was so effective that what they established still remains as today's military mail system. 1944. Post Office Inspector Robert Moon developed the idea for the Zone Improvement Program, the zip code, but it took 20 years to get that implemented. In 1947, Jesse M. Donaldson became the first Chief Postal Inspector to be appointed Postmaster General. Another title change came about in 1954. Post Office Inspector was changed to Postal Inspector to reflect the relationship to all phases of postal services and the U.S. Mail, instead of only to post offices. Over the years, inspectors showed their ability to adapt to investigating postal crimes and providing security on all types of conveyances. Whether it was on stagecoaches, steamships, or trains, inspectors met the challenges and solved the crimes. But the 1950s opened up a new area of concern airplanes. In 1955, the first mail bomb exploded on board an aircraft and established the need for inspectors to be specially trained in bomb investigations. 1958, owners of the Hope Diamond sent the priceless jewel to the Smithsonian Institution by U.S. Mail. Postal inspectors ensured that the gem arrived safely at its destination. Here's a historical factoid you probably didn't know. In 1963, Postal Inspector Harry Holmes interviewed Lee Harvey Oswald about the mail-order rifle used to assassinate President John F. Kennedy. Minutes later, Oswald was gunned down by Jack Ruby. The 1970s were a decade of firsts and of change. With the Postal Reorganization Act of 1970, the Bureau of Chief Postal Inspector became the United States Postal Inspection Service. 1970. The Security Force, the uniform branch of the Postal Inspection Service, was formed, primarily responsible for protecting people and property and keeping the peace on postal property. Postal police officers also respond to natural and man-made disasters. In 1971, the Postal Inspection Service became one of the first federal law enforcement agencies to hire female agents. 1972. Postal inspectors and crime lab forensic scientists proved that a handwritten note giving author Clifford Irving exclusive rights to the Howard Hughes biography was a fraud. Also in 1972, 200 investigative aides, formally detailed to the inspection service, became special investigators. An investigative aide helped protect the 601 carat Lesotho diamond mailed from Europe to New York. Later in the decade, they became postal inspectors. A tragedy befell the postal police in 1981. Postal police officer Michael Healy was shot and killed during a robbery attempt at the Chicago main post office. His shield number 3972 is used on all PPO branding in his memory. 1984, the passage of the Child Protection Act gave postal inspectors additional powers to focus on child pornography distributors and their customers. Since 1984, postal inspectors have arrested thousands of child molesters and pornographers. 1987, postal inspectors arrested Ivan Bosky and Michael Milken as part of a widespread insider trading case on Wall Street. 1989, televangelist Jim Baker, co-founder of the Praise the Lord Club, was arrested by postal inspectors for mail fraud. Baker scammed believers by using $178 million of their mailed-in money for personal gain. His sentence, 45 years in prison. 1991, in Operation Bogart, postal inspectors broke up a worldwide billion dollar art fraud ring that marketed bogus prints purported to be signed by such renowned artists as Salvador Dali, Joan Miro, and Pablo Picasso. From 1978 to 1996, Ted Kaczynski, AKA the Unabomber, mailed and placed bombs throughout the country, killing three and injuring 23. Postal inspectors played an integral role on the task force that made the arrests, marking the end of one of the largest and most extensive criminal manhunts in modern history. 1998. 
Showtime Network aired The Inspectors, the first movie about postal inspectors since the 1951 classic, Appointment with Danger. The movie was based on the 1991 Chugiak Alaska mail box. 2000, the new millennium brought new challenges. It opened with a new postal inspection service seal designed to represent all inspection service employees. But in 2001, the world changed forever. One month after the terrorist attacks of 9-11, for the first time in our nation's history, the mail was used in a biohazard attack. Letters containing anthrax were mailed to media and congressional representatives, resulting in the deaths of two postal employees, three citizens, and sickening 17 others, including a postal inspector. After a nine-year investigation with the FBI, a suspect was identified but committed suicide before charges were brought. Inspectors responded to thousands of white powder incidents over the ensuing years. The mailings resulted in postal inspectors being trained in emergency responses to hazardous items in the mail. Whether it's a man-made disaster or a natural disaster, inspection service personnel respond. In 2005, Hurricane Katrina, the most destructive natural disaster in U.S. history, hit the Gulf Coast, destroying 17 post offices and displacing 4,000 postal employees. Nearly 300 inspection service personnel responded, accounting for all employees and restoring service. The decade starting in 2010 showed an increased focus on trafficking of illegal narcotics by mail. From 2010 through 2019, inspectors arrested more than 19,000 individuals for drug trafficking through the mail, seizing more than $180 million in illegal drug proceeds. Almost 100 years after Charles Ponzi scammed people out of their money, another fraudster tried it again. For 20 years, Alan Stanford lured investors to buy certificates of deposit in his offshore bank with the promise of high returns. Postal inspectors revealed a $7 billion Ponzi scheme, arrested the mastermind of the scheme, and seized his proceeds. In 2012, Stanford was sentenced to 110 years in prison. Despite high-profile investigations, the agency was still low-profile when it came to publicity. No longer willing to be called the silent service, the inspection service finally started to get some recognition. They were featured in a new exhibit called Behind the Badge that opened in 2014 at the Smithsonian Institution's National Postal Museum. In 2015, the CBS network premiered The Inspectors, a half-hour drama series about the inspection service. The show ran for four seasons averaging 60 million viewers per season and capturing two daytime Emmys. 2017, an investigation by postal inspectors in the Department of Justice led to Western Union and MoneyGram agreeing to return almost $600 million to victims of fraudulent foreign lottery, sweepstakes, online dating, and advance fee schemes. In 2018, mail bombs were sent to 16 high-profile political figures news media agencies, and actors. Within days of the first mailing, Caesar Sayak was identified by postal inspectors and arrested. He was sentenced to 20 years in federal prison. 80 years after the first crime lab was established, forensic scientists and technical specialists are now located at the National Forensic Laboratory at Dulles, Virginia, and at 22 digital evidence locations around the United States. They play key roles in identifying, apprehending, prosecuting, and convicting individuals responsible for postal crimes. 2020 brought the first global pandemic in 100 years and nationwide civil unrest. Despite the dangers, Postal Inspection Service personnel provided security for postal employees and conducted investigations to protect Americans from pandemic scams. And that's a look back at the first 245 years of America's first federal law enforcement agency. The men and women who make up today's Postal Inspection Service continue the tradition of the ones who laid the foundation. Postal Inspection Service personnel continue to protect the Postal Service, its employees, and its customers from criminal attack and the nation's mail from criminal misuse. Their efforts ensure 
America's confidence in the mail.